Hi, this is HT Wing Nut again um, with the uh, Sager NP9873 um, based on the Clevo P870 DM3. Um, uh, today I'm going to go ahead and try to disassemble the heat seek assembly on this beast. And uh, I uh, first my first time doing it, so I'll try to edit the video as best I can to get out all the. Uh, not interesting things here, but either way, um, hopefully it'll be a learning experience and uh, we're successful. Uh, part of it is too is the temperatures on this machine were running pretty high uh, for benchmarking. Like the CPU was going up to as high as 100 degrees Celsius, and the fans were going full tilt. Uh, so I think there might be something either with the heat sink or the thermal paste or, or something that that I want to take a look at as well. Hopefully we can improve those. So here we go. Um, first thing, thanks to uh, Meeker at uh, Notebook Review for giving me the hint on uh, removing this bottom panel. Obviously first you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws and then you basically just have to take the front and lift up right there and it comes off. It came off easier that time but the first time it was pretty difficult. You zoom in a little bit. Better view. I'll try to keep that in frame there. Okay, should have noted before you get started. Um, obviously, tools for the job are pretty straightforward. Just a small Phillips head screwdriver, thermal paste of your choice. I'd recommend some isopropyl rubbing alcohol, uh, highest percentage possible. It's going to go ahead here and start with the uh, numbering sequence that they have here. You can see it's all numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, well, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and I think that's it. So all 16. We'll see how it goes. Well, first thing first, uh, remove the battery. that's everything. Um, then obviously I'm going to have to remove the screws for this heat sink here. But uh, got all the screws out. I've used quite a bit of down pressure on a lot of these um, to get them loose. But try not to just sit there and spin it hard and strip them out in any case. Um, let's see how this thing comes up. There you go. There's the beast. So it is a big solid block of copper. It's just um, apparently it's a vapor chamber in here. But that's a lot of copper. A lot of heat pads. And uh, huh, very interesting. Now for the CPU. There's the heat sink for the CPU. Must be the SLI cable there. We go ahead and disconnect the power. There's your dual GTX 1080s. You can see it's definitely wider than your slot. Um, it looks like it's about the same size as the uh, 
980s that went in the uh, previous generation laptops. See, here's the uh, SLI cable, master and slave. So the uh, slave card is right here, master card is right there. I don't want to pull this off. I think it's just held down by thermal pads or something, but there you go. Let me get out uh, tape measure so we can take some... Uh, oh, there we go. It's about 120 by... So I'm having trouble getting this in... Uh, by about a hundred. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean these up and then uh, put them back in, repaste it and away we go. See actually that wasn't too bad. Um, just this, this heat pipe is, this thing is gigantic. It weighs, oh wait that's what I was going to do. I'm going to weigh this. Two pounds, six ounces. Two pounds, six ounces. Pretty beefy. Compared to the CPU heatsink, which is seven ounce, seven point two ounces. There you have it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean this all up and I'll reassemble it and uh, we'll see how temperatures do. Okay, I got everything cleaned up as best I could. Um, looking pretty good here. Let's take a look at the CPU. i7-6700K. And obviously the GTX 1080 mobile version. Um, I'm trying to take a look at the uh, memory here to see what uh, numbers on there but it looks like it's kind of all I tried to clean it off but just all like smudged off or something. It's hard to get a good read on it but it's about the best I can do right there. Can I look at it this direction? That one right there. But then you've also got the die itself, right? It's that die. All right, let's take a look at this again. That die is twenty mils by, you know. 17 mils. So, and uh, I did look underneath at this, and it is definitely it's like secured by like some sort of double-sided thermal tape to some foam pieces. So I don't want to tear that off. It would be nice to take a look at this from the other side. Um, some thermal pads there, and. Uh, That is 80 mils across, yep, so that's your typical, I believe that's your typical MXM slot width, 
So in any case, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, repaste this, reassemble it. I might as well do that on camera here. I'll be using IC Diamond on here. Oh, this tube's done. That should be sufficient for that. I'll place this on. Everything lines up. enough. Now, this is the slave card, so this is going to have to run underneath here. Right. Okay, simple as that. I put a little thick on here because I got to make sure I get across the whole die. In this case, I'd rather have a little bit more than not enough. And here we go. Everything lined up. Falls into place nicely. And there we go. Now we just start putting the screws back. thing I wanted to mention, I should have mentioned this ahead of time, is that notice, and it's good, they call them out um, M2, 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 and the length. So you've got a couple different kinds of screws here. Um, the M2s by four, which are used he here, 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 and uh, then you get the little bit wider ones that are here, here, and here, and you get the one long black screw like the rest that are used around the lid here. So um, it looks like everything's in place. Um, crossing my fingers here. We'll get it back together, get it up and running, and see how it does. Okay, got it back up and running. Um, and uh, I've got this 
HW monitor and uh, GPU-Z. I'm going to go ahead and run 3D Mark, and uh, we'll see how this goes. This is the first time I've run this. Before we get started, though, let's look. Um, CPU is 65, uh, 40C right now. Seems to be bouncing around. Um, GPUs are at 42 and 39, so everything is detected. And uh, we'll go ahead and do a uh, time spy benchmark here. All right, there we go. And check out these. Uh, Whoa, GPU. GPU one hit ninety C, the other one only hit sixty seven C. And the CPU again still hit ninety nine C. So I'm gonna compare the results of this ninety six eighty nine. Yeah, I ended up with, uh, let's see here, actually it's a slightly lower score. Pre my notes show me that we were at 99.83, the 12,363 GPU score, a CPU score of 47.75. And in this case, a little better on the CPU, but the uh, graphics score has gone down a little bit. So, hmm, curious. In any case, um, Interesting, I'm going to go ahead and run some more benchmarks and uh, go from here. Thanks. All right, I thought I'd bring up a, a quick update um, that uh, I've started fussing with the uh, CPU um, overclocking uh, software, which is reminiscent of um, Intel XTU and basically looks like it offers uh, similar features but in a nice snazzy little interface here. Let's adjust CPU and uh, memory um, clock settings but what's of importance here and interest is the uh, override setting here for the voltage and I've been running this undervolting this and seeing how I can get it steady um, and I've been uh, improving uh, CPU core um, temps down to high 80s up to 90 um, so it's, it's manageable um, so just uh, I'm gonna have to do some more tuning and uh, go from there. So just uh, it's not a complete failure. It looks like the uh, factory paste job was actually pretty decent. Uh, at least mine didn't improve it at all. So it looks like it's uh, tuning from the system side um, that hopefully will get us within the reasonable temperatures. I think the GPU is doing okay. It's a little high but uh, considering you've got dual 180 watt cards it's doing pretty phenomenal in my opinion. Um, and just if we get the CPU temps down to below 90 consistently I think uh, it'll be in business. So just didn't want to leave, leave you thinking that the uh, system is not capable of keeping itself cool. It's just a matter of how you uh, have to tweak it a little bit to uh, get uh, a little bit better temperatures. And thanks for listening. Um, I'll probably once it, I'll go through a bunch of tuning. Once I'm done, I'll get back with you and uh, show you results of gaming benchmarks and, and CPU benchmarks, etc., and more details on the display, etc. So. Till next time, thanks for listening.